All right, hi folks, my name is Ariana. I am also from Census, and I'm here to talk about some ongoing work about lessons we learned when we scanned the internet about every 45 minutes. Um, so before I start with that, just a quick primer on the internet for folks who might not have as much of a networking background. Uh, the internet is in quotes because it's made up, obviously. <laughs> Um, so the internet is made up of these things called hosts. You can think of them of net, as network devices. You know, your laptop, servers on the internet, IoT devices. And when I think of a host, I think of a device that has an IP address, so where we find it on the internet, as well as what port and protocol it is relaying information over. And again, to kind of simplify this for the folks who might not have as much networking background, Port and proto combinations, you can think of them as like languages and dialects at a really high level. It's how these devices speak to each other on the internet. It's how they display content. And there's a lot of these different uh, port protocol combinations on the internet. So for example, you can have a device or a host that speaks 80 HTTP, which is pretty common. Those are like your HTML pages. You can also see something that speaks 80 HTTPS which is weirder, it's stranger, but it exists. It happens on the internet because the internet's a wild place. And one of the tools that is useful for understanding the internet is this thing called internet-wide scanning. Pretty self-explanatory, it's where you take a program and you scan all the hosts on the internet, or maybe a subset of them, maybe not all. And you basically uh, try to speak to them over their specific port protocol combination, and you say, hey, what data are you willing to publicly tell me? So we're not breaking in, we're not hacking, this is all publicly available information. Um, again, just to like break it down into, or up level into an analogy, imagine if Santa is just going around the world every 12 hours, knocking on every host door and saying, hey, are you home? Also, what do you speak? Okay, thanks, bye. That's essentially internet-wide scanning. And this is a super useful tool for security research because you can look at hosts on your own network and see what ports and protocols are open. You can look at the spread of CVEs over, an entire, over the entire internet. Um, and the nice thing about, for me, for everyone in this room, is that you don't need to run your own server farm in order to get this information. In fact, there are now a number of uh, scanning-wide engines, census being one of them, that do the scanning and then make that data accessible to others. Um, but good research requires really good data. And at Census, we are always thinking about how can we get more accurate internet-wide scanning data. And a little while ago, we noticed this facet, this really strange anecdotal behavior where we would be scanning these hosts, and they would be responsive, and then all of a sudden they'd disappear. And then they'd respond again after like two, four, six, 12 hours. That flapping behavior seemed a little strange to us. And like I said, we're always thinking, how can we make our data better? Because we want to enable better security research for ourselves and also for everyone in the community. And so we didn't understand really what was going on. So we were like, let's set out to understand this behavior to help us better our internet-wide scanning. And this brings me to a deceivingly simple question, which is what I'm going to try and answer for the rest of this talk. How ephemeral is the internet? Or in other words, how often do we really need to scan different parts of the internet and also to, in order to get the most accurate data? Quick step back, who am I? My name's Ariana, as you can probably tell. I work as a senior security researcher at Census. Prior to this, I did my PhD at UCSD, where my focus was on internet measurement and empowering security decisions. Um, at this point in my slides, I was gonna say, I'm wearing an orange blazer, please come talk to me, it's so easy to find me, but all the volunteers are also wearing orange. So this is just an example of how the best laid plans can go to waste very quickly. Um, I'll still be wearing this, please come find me. I love internet measurement. <laughs> Okay, so back to the task at hand. How ephemeral is the internet? As with any good measurement question, you can often break down this overarching philosophical question into more concrete measurable outcomes. And so really what I wanna find out is if we scan really frequently, what trends do we find across different ports, protocols, and autonomous systems? I'll get to what an AS is in a couple of slides. So if you're like, what the heck is that? Don't worry yet. And so to make sure we're on this game, same page, um, I'm just gonna go over our methodology really quickly. We scanned hosts that had the 40 most common ports open every 45 minutes for a week. Um, I, so in an ideal world, I would have had like 20 servers to do this experiment on, so we were limited by server load. We ended up only scanning about six million IPs because this takes time. 
Um, and the way that we picked those IPs is essentially we got a list of responsive IPs on these 40 most common ports, took a subset of them, and then kicked off our predictive scanning protocol tool um, that we use at Census for our actual data set. And this predictive protocol scanning is really key, and I'm going to take a second and a couple slides to explain why. Um, so like I mentioned a, f a little while ago, you can have hosts that speak different ports and protocols, ADHTTP ver versus ADHTTPS. And so if we just look at the spread of ports that the different IPs speak, for example, we get this graph. So the x-axis is port, the y-axis is just raw number of IPs, and you'll see that um, we in our data set, there's a heavy concentration of IPs that are speaking popular ports. This is very unsurprising. What was a little more surprising is that, um, so we kicked off this predictive protocol scanning tool. And so instead of us saying, hey, you're on port 80, you're always going to speak HTTP, we let our scanning engine predict that for us. Um, and so this x-axis is 40. Um, I'm now going to show you a graph that not only shows port, but is the port protocol combinations combined. And this is that graph. Uh, you can't read that x-axis, and that's intentional because there are 412 port protocol combinations when we use predictive scanning. And so this is actually one of the takeaways that I, I really wanted to drive home in this talk today, is that this matches up actually with some prior research that a lot of um, ports do not only speak standard protocols. This speaks to the importance of predictive of non or non-standard scanning. And as a measurement scientist, you cannot assume that a given port will always speak its standard protocol. And not only does prior research show that, but our own measurements back that up too. A little bit more about the ground truth of the ground truth, as I like to call it. Like I said, we were limited by how many servers we could um, spin up to run this experiment. So we scanned about 6 million IPs. Of those 6 million, 81% of them spoke exactly one protocol during the entire week. And so for simplicity, I'm going to focus on that 81%. There's some really interesting other stuff going on with that other 19%. Specifically, there's like 7% of hosts that our protocol scanner could talk to and get data from. And then all of a sudden, they would respond with data that we couldn't parse. It was just like unknown in our data set. So there's some weird stuff going on in that 19%, but that's a, a di totally different top topic and a totally different talk. And so bringing this back to our measurement question, what trends do we uncover across protocon AS when we scan frequently. And the metric of interest that uh, we set out to first quantify was what do we find when we examine lifespans? And so when I say lifespan, I mean you know a contiguous portion of positive or successful protocol scans. So the host is responding positively every 45 minutes um, on a given protocol. Um, and the lifespan is how long they are successfully responding. So a lifespan could be an hour, right? So something responds for an hour, it disappears. It could be a day. It could be 7.8 days, which is the entire duration of the measurement ex experiment. Um, and I could show lifespans for just the port. But like I keep saying, ports are often um, in research, they are often shown in the context of the protocol they're also speaking. So for the rest of this talk, everything I'm going to show is going to be port protocol specific. And um, we're going to look at some common port protocol lifespans. But before I get to some major takeaways, I want to take 30 seconds to discuss what this type of graph is. Um, because you're going to see a lot of these, sorry. Um, so this is a CDF, or a cumulative distribution function. Um, this is essentially a uh, distribution of your data of interest. So the y-axis is from 0 to 1, but you can map that to percentiles. And the x-axis is your metric of interest. For, so for us, it's days. And like I said, we ran this experiment for about 7.8 days, because that's when I cut off the scans. Um, and just to really drive home how to read this graph, I've highlighted the 50th percentile, or the median, with the red line. And if we see where that intersects with the blue line, and we let our eyes draw down, that means that the 50th, per 50th percentile of ADHTTP is at about 0.6 days or 15 hours. And so what that means is that um, there are a little under 50% of devices that have lifespans that are longer, and that's the, this top arching curve. And then a little under 50% of devices have lifespans that are shorter, and this is like this really sharp uptick. 
The other thing I want to point out about these types of graphs is you might notice as your eyes follow this blue line, um, it goes straight up at the end. And that essentially means that at the end percentiles, 95th, 96th, 97th, 99th, 100th percentile, um, the lifespan's maxed out. So like the 99th percentile of devices that speak ADHDTP had lifespans of 7.8 days. And so if you see those straight lines, that's essentially what that means. So like I said, sorry in advance, you're gonna see a lot of these, but now that we've kind of walked through one of them, I hope that these make a little more sense. And if they don't, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the takeaways anyway. Um, let's look at the five most popular port protocol combinations and their lifespans. And so if you remember that graph with the 412 combinations, these are those first five bars. And these are their distribution of lifespans. So not only, and uh, just for clarification, I've posted the, the typed the medians of um, these popular port protocol combinations on the right hand side. So like ADHTTP has a median of 0 0.66, 7547 HTTP or CWMP for those of those of in the room who know are 0.5 days. Um, you'll see that the green line 443 HTTPS is a weird outlier. It's really short lived. It goes up and then over to the right at a much quicker pace than its counterparts, which I'll talk about closer to the end of these slides. But the really important part, the really interesting part about the CDFs is that we can see the distribution. And so in cases where we have medians that are really similar, like 80 HTTP and 22 SSH, the blue line and the red line, they both have medians or 50th percentiles at about 0 .66, 0 .69 days. But if we look at the blue line and the red line, their behaviors are really different. What this is telling me is that uh, devices, hosts that speak 22 SSH, sure, at the median they might be 0.69 days in terms of their lifespan, but then after that be they become far longer lived. And so 22 SSH is actually a far longer lived protocol in terms of lifespans than 80 HTTP its counterpart. And this is why something like this, looking at the entire distribution, is so key to understanding this ecosystem. And so we see a lot of variation <laughs> in common ports and protocols um, with the outlier in 443 HTTPS, which like I said, I'll get to. Um, I want to show you five other port, or not five, um, another set of port protocols for comparison that have very different intentions. So a lot of these, you know, they're HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, TCP, SIP. Um, this graph is all mail protocols. Um, so Again, just like a quick background, for those of you who don't know, email has its own set of ports and protocols. These distributions look very different. Those straight lines are super pronounced. And if you actually look at the medians on the right-hand side, sorry, I forgot to type medians. The medians are all between 6 and 7.8 days, which is the maximum of the experiment duration. And so what we find is that mail protocols are far longer lived than their counterparts. But if we actually take a step back and ask ourselves, why is that happening? It is because the intention of the port and protocol can really inform its behavior. Who here runs a mail server? Yeah, a couple people. How much downtime do you have? <laughs> a little. <laughs> yeah. So mail servers are meant functionally to stay online to forever, or as long as the, the admin wants, in order to transfer email back and forth. If there's downtime, then you can have downtime in the actual transport of emails themselves. Or something like HTTP, if your HTTP web page goes down, comes back up, no harm, no foul. And so this really speaks to understanding the intention behind some of these ports and protocols and why they are exhibiting these behaviors. There's 412 port protocol combinations. I'm not going to show you. I'm not, I'm not going to just like keep going through five and five and five. Um, but instead, I, I'm going to take a quick step back and just summarize this portion really quickly, which is that when we look at lifespans based on responsiveness, whether there was a successful scan or not, we see a variation of lifespan mediums from 0.8 hours all the way to 188 hours, which is the duration, like I said, of the experiment lifespan. Or in other words, these port protocol lifespans can vary quite widely, um, actually a lot more widely than we anticipated. Now, I love to make my life hard, and so the next question is, what happens if we add autonomous systems or a third variable into the mix? 
And so for those who don't know what an autonomous system is, it's essentially a set of IPs that's owned by the same organization and has the same routing. So like Google has a set of autonomous systems, Census has its own autonomous system, or AS. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm going to look at three ASs that have very different um, functions. Again, we're going to look at Cloudflare, Microsoft, and Kix, which is the largest Korea telecom, as a case study. And to keep things really simple, we're going to look at 80 HTTP to start off. And so what you'll see here, again, lovely CDF. The blue line is the port protocol distribution in aggregate. The orange line is d hosts that speak ADHTTP specifically on that AS, Microsoft Corp, MSN, et cetera, et cetera. And so when we compare these two, we can say, OK, um, the devices that speak ADHTTP on this AS are much shorter lived than the entire population that we're looking at. When we do the same examination for Cloudflare, it's basically the exact opposite. That ADHTTP is far longer lived than the, the aggregate. And if we look at the Korea Telecom, it's still longer lived, but not as pronounced. Um, and again, I've posted the medians just to make this a little bit more, this takeaway a little bit more salient. Um, one of the things to make note here is that similar to like how ports and protocols can have different intentions, these autonomous systems have different purposes, different intentions. Um, Microsoft sells hosts as a service. And so you're going to have a lot of customers who spin something up. Maybe they bring it down, they spin it up again. Um, Cloudflare is a content delivery network. Again, kind of similar to, to mail servers or mail protocols, it's meant to have really solid uptime. And then a Korea Telecom, part of its function is to provide uh, residential access. And so that might be why it's not as pronounced as Cloudflare, but it's still a little bit longer lived than the aggregate. These um, purposes, these reasons that these different autonomous systems exist can also start to inform trends and how we might want to scan these different aspects or these different ASs differently. Um, I'm done with CDFs, by the way. This is your last CDF. If we also look at ports and protocols that are meant to be really similar in, in intentionality, though, we don't necessarily see parity between um, the, two, the two distributions. So what do I mean by that? Um, these are the three autonomous systems. Uh, and these are just medians, because I figured at this point you might be graphed out. Um, and we see the medians for port 80. It's 1.1 hours, 7.8 days, and 1.7 days. If we look at port 8080, and again, only HTTP, often folks on the internet treat 80 and 8080 very similarly. It's meant you know, to serve web pages. Um, with Cloudflare, we see very similar behavior, but we don't necessarily see that with Microsoft and Kix. And so we not only see a huge variation between AS, but also ports speaking the same protocol, which have the same intentionality. And this was, again, where like all my hypotheses started getting thrown out the window a little bit. Um, oh, and then I already spoke to this. AS intention can also make a huge difference. So, with my last two remaining minutes, I want to dive into to one other discussion, which is what if we change our definition of lifespan? So, so far, we have categorized lifespan as successful protocol scans up and down time, right? But we saw that with 443 HTTPS, there were really short lifespans, which seems a little strange compared to the rest of the port protocol combinations. And so that got us thinking, what if we changed our definition um, to include looking at how the host itself is changing? You know, what if it just, there's some measurement error, um, something weird is going on with the network, a lot of weird things can happen on the internet. And so instead, let's look at how the host itself is changing over time. And so I came up with this idea of like a host cookie per protocol. So this is the fields that are of most interest for that port and protocol. And this, um, for this last remaining couple slides, I'll do a case study on 443 HTTPS. And the two fields of interest were the SHA-256 of the body hash and the fingerprint of the certificate. And so we combine those together to make the host cookie. And we're like, surely the lifespans of 443 HTTPS must increase, because why would these things be changing so drastically? And instead, when we calculated lifespans based on change, the median lifespan increased from 0.8 hours to 1.1. This was not what I was anticipating, folks. Um, some digging, because uh, this project has been a lot of me digging, 
we realized that the SHA-256 of the body hash is actually too granular for our purpose and intentions. Because what's often happening with HTTP, which is an incredibly dynamic protocol, is you'd have frame IDs that change every time you visit the web page. And if you visit the web page every 45 minutes, you're going to get a slightly different frame ID. Take a SHA-256 of that. That SHA-256 is going to be different every single time. And we actually verified this hypothesis because when we calculated the lifespan just based on the certificate fingerprint, the median lifespan all of a sudden became 188 hours. Again, the entire duration of the experiment run. And so this brings me to this philosophical question, which is what is the definition of a host for us, for you in your measurement exper experiment? It could be the SHA-256 body hash. It could be the certificate. Um, for us, we're now looking at context-specific hashing. Because if a body hash or a, a body HTML changes by 3, 4, 10 bytes, to us, that's functionally the same host. And so there are some changes um, that we are examining for our own purposes. OK, this is my tunnel of terrors. Quick recap. Takeaway number one is that the internet is not homogenous in its ephemerality. Um, single isolated scans, if you're a security researcher, may be totally acceptable, but not if you're trying to take the pulse of something. At the port and protocol level, we find median lifespans varying all the way from 0.8 hours to 188 hours, and we find additionally wide variation when we add an autonomous system. Takeaway number two is to understand what you are trying to measure and why it's important. This gets back to the deep philosophical question of what is a host? What does lifespan mean for you? Is it uptime? Is it change? With HTTPS 443 alone, these different metrics and measures change our lifespan metrics quite wildly. And then finally, the internet is constantly evolving. We need to be conducting measurements more consistently to understand these weird facets and what's going on. And my colleague Emily had mentioned that you know counting is hard. What I really want to leave you folks with is that measuring is also very hard. So there's a lot of different next steps. I think I'm a minute over time. Um, I just want to thank my colleagues at Census really quick. Good research is not done in isolation. I'm very thankful to be learning with my members along the research and data team every day. Um, and I want to thank you folks for your time. If you have questions, you can come find me in my orange blazer. Thank you so much.